The NDP is probably understandably upset with the Liberal decision to support the budget. New Democrat Thomas Mulcair joins me now from the foyer of the House of Commons. He's smiling. You don't look too upset, Tom Mulcair, but I bet in your heart of hearts you are upset, aren't you? Well, it's a, it's a surprising turn of events, uh, Don, but I can tell you one of my first hints that uh, this thing was uh, falling apart came yesterday afternoon when I saw Bob Ray walk in front of me in this little area that we have reserved for the opposition. Because don't forget, Michael Ignatieff convinced Mr. Ray to step aside because two, one of two things was going to happen. We were either heading to an election and the Liberals had to clarify their leadership, or we were heading for a coalition and the Liberals had to clarify their leadership. So Mr. Ignatieff got what he wanted, and now he's acting like Stéphane Dion. He's going to vote for the 45th time in a row the Liberals are going to vote with the Conservatives. We're now in our fourth year of that, and nothing's changed. So you actually think that this budget, there is not enough good in it uh, to support it because uh, $85 billion worth of deficits over the next five years. Uh, hard to imagine the coalition would be running any bigger deficits than that. It's not a question of the size of the deficit, though, Don. First of all, all OECD countries, the G20, have all said that 2% of G GDP was about the mm -hmm. right stimulus. Here they're claiming 1.9. That's been debunked by all sides. It's not true because they're counting in their money that they're presuming that's going to be added by the provinces and the municipalities. It's close to. It's more like one third uh, of what what was required. It's closer to 0.7%. But that being said, the real question is, do we trust the Conservatives to do this? Don't forget, the consensus view is that beyond six months, Mr. Harper would be allowed to call an election. So the only thing that he has in mind, he's a good strategist, was the concentration was on the, la the next two months to get himself past that six-month, seven-month window beyond which the Governor-General will let him have an election as opposed to allowing the, op the opposition parties to govern. That's what this is about more than anything else. The Conservatives don't believe any of this stuff. They never have, and I don't think that they're going to apply it once the, the crunch comes. Well, but, but isn't that what these reports are meant to uh, deal with yeah. and followed by opposition days where there can be a non-confidence motion? So the gun is still to the Harper government's head. Oh, and, and the, I could tell you the whole front bench of the Conservatives was trembling, Don, because not only do they have a gun to their heads right now, it's a water pistol, uh, they, they've been told that they've been put on probation. Judy Scro said that this afternoon, that they were putting the Conservatives on probation. And I can just tell you this, Judy Scro used to be the head of the status of women. How can someone who once took care of the status of women in this country actually vote for a budget that is going to remove from women the right to go to court to obtain equal pay for work of equal value. That's what the Liberals have always fought for. That's what we in the NDP have always fought for. The Conservatives are against it. They're putting it in as a budget measure. And now the Liberal Party under Michael Ignatieff is voting for it. You know why they're voting for this budget? Because they had nothing different to propose. They agree with it, and that's why the Liberals are voting for it. Now, is it not true, though, that they, they have now got the hammer? Because when they do move a non-confidence motion, and maybe it's not even in 2009, uh, you're going to have to vote for a non-confidence motion, and so are the Bloc. Oh, yeah? Going to, so, so, hold now on, hold up, on, so now it's up to the Liberals to decide when the election comes, and not up to Tom Mulcair and Jack Layton and the rest of your caucus, okay. not up to Gilles Duceppe and the rest of his caucus. Oh, yeah? So the, the Liberals have effectively moved you off to the sidelines, and they've effectively, for the moment at least, uh, made Harper back down and accept their amendment. I got news for you. I just had a conversation with Gilles Giuseppe, and he repeated something that I know that they've already communicated very clearly to the Liberals. Gilles Giuseppe is, is at his high watermark with 40, 49 seats. Mm -hmm. He knows that Ignatieff is resurgent, far more popular in Quebec than Stéphane Dion ever was, and it does, in fact, as you just pointed out, require all three opposition right. parties. What interest does Gilles Giuseppe have to put all those seats in jeopardy? The, the couple of million votes that he has translates into several million dollars a year. He's got hundreds and hundreds of staffers. Why is he going to put that in jeopardy when he knows that Ignatiev's there? I'll make you a prediction, Don, and this is the fun thing about shows like yours and mm -hmm. my job. I'm going to predict for you right now that Michael Ignatiev is going to turn 65 and get his pension before we see the next election. Oh, no, that's not true because he can't get his pension. He's never worked in Canada. Oh, well, there's a shot. We'll end on that for now, but uh, this is being recorded, so I'm not sure what we bet, but <laughs> we have the record. Anyway, Tom Mulcair, thank you. Thank you, Don.